sealed orders. The long room was crammed with trestle tables arranged in rows, with crowds of people jostling to get a look at the displays of rare and exotic postage stamps laid out to view. Outside the windows, torrential rain pelted down. Lucky there was this stamp exhibition in the town hall for us to duck into. Hmm. Look at these stamps. Nice pictures. It's an old sailing ship. And warriors with tattoos and feathered headdresses. Bet you they're Maoris. You reckon? Jamie, what's happening? I don't know. Just went down. The people just sort of disappeared. Look up at the sky. Wow. I've never seen so many stars before. We seem to be on a ship. The Endeavour. What? The Endeavour. It was a ship we were looking at in the picture on a stamp. Captain Cook's ship. You know, he discovered New Zealand and Australia too, of course. How come you know so much about it? We did it in history last year. What are you two doing on deck this late at night? Uh, we... Funny. I thought I knew everyone on board. But I don't recognise you. I was just going to say the same about you. Oliver Weston, midshipman. Sarah and Jamie. Uh, explorers. I suppose I don't know you because I've been under the weather for most of the voyage. Haven't had much of a chance to work out who's who on board. We've been a bit off-colour ourselves, and it seems to have affected our memory. Yes, I've noticed the fever can do that. But at least most of the crew have stayed healthy on this voyage, thanks to the captain. The captain? What's he got to do with it? He's made us all eat cress and sauerkraut, instead of surviving on dry ship's biscuits like most crews have to. And he makes sure there's plenty of air in our quarters, and we have to shake out our bedding regularly. Why's that? To get rid of the fleas. Oh! Oof. Mr. Weston? I don't seem to know these lads. Who are they? I didn't recognise them myself at first, sir. Like me, they've been sick for a while. Maybe they have. And maybe they're stowaways. They could have sneaked on board at Tahiti. Funny you should mention Tahiti. We were just saying it was the highlight of the trip so far. That's right. A real highlight, Tahiti. Hmm. As you were so impressed with the place, perhaps you can tell me what our purpose was there. It was to observe the planet Venus passing across the sun, of course, sir. Hmm. Very well. Carry on, Mr. Weston. I have matters to attend to. Phew. I thought he was going to chuck us overboard. Oh, the captain wouldn't do that, though he has been known to flog a wrongdoer. Flog? He has them whipped. And, of course, he'll hang someone for something really serious. Uh, hang? By the neck, until dead. There's usually a ship's holiday for that. I think I'm going to have to be very careful what I say from now on. Talking of hangings, I'm afraid if I don't come up with something soon to save my friend Judah, he'll be doing his last dance at the end of the captain's rope. Who's Judah? Should we know him? Midshipman Judah Frome. He didn't do it, you know. But how are we going to convince the captain? You wouldn't like to remind us about that as well, would you? That fever. You've forgotten about that too? Well, when the captain was commissioned for this voyage, he was given additional orders from the Admiralty, which he was told not to open until we sailed out of Tahiti. Seems a strange thing to do. Yes, well, it's not for the likes of us to question what goes on in the minds of our betters. We won't be talking like that in 200 years' time. Anyway, the orders told him where he was to go next. So when we left Tahiti, the captain sent Judah to the great cabin to fetch his strong box. And? The strong box was empty. According to Judah, it had been broken into. The captain's valuables and the sealed orders were gone. And the captain blamed your friend? Yes. He clapped Judah in irons, and he's been down in the brig ever since, on a diet of bread and water. Is there any chance Judah might have done it? No. He looks a bit of a ruffian, it's true. And back in England, he had a reputation as a cut purse, but he swore to me he was innocent, and I believe him. If it wasn't him, who was it? I don't know for sure, but I've a strong suspicion it may have been Arkit Vraneg, the galley hand. Have you got any evidence? No, but Vraneg hated the captain for making him serve up all that crescent sauerkraut we've been eating. He said it was not fit fodder for seafaring men. Have you told the captain you think it might have been Vraneg? I tried. But he wouldn't listen. He said he wouldn't have a dead man blamed for another's crime. Dead man? Uh, sorry, I've forgotten about that too. What was it he died of? A sudden seizure. 
He was found dead in his hammock one morning. What could have caused that? Nobody knows. Anyway, without his orders, the captain doesn't know where to head next. So we're just sailing around aimlessly, day after day, hoping the sealed orders will turn up. Storm approaching! Get the approach! Storm? You must be crazy. I've never seen a clearer sky. Clear or not, if the captain says there's a storm on the way, you can be sure there is. You can smell a storm a hundred miles away. last night's storm and reached a safe anchorage. I will be taking a party ashore to find fresh fruit and water. We will clean up the ship and repair the damage caused by the storm. But first, to lift everyone's spirits, there will be an issue of rum to all hands. Hey, 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 come on, hey, lads, splice hey, the main hey, breeze. Wonder where we are. I don't know, but it looks nice. Palm trees and mountains, and the sea's so calm, you'd never guess there'd been that terrible storm last night. Launch the boat! Everybody take a sack to collect provisions, and don't forget, be back in two hours. The place looks very exotic. Reminds me of the hothouses at the botanical gardens. What's that up ahead? A mountain. Yes, I know it's a mountain. But look, it's got smoke coming out of the top. It must be a volcano. Do you think it's safe? How should I know? Look, there's a mass of fruit over there, but it's still green. Do you think we should pick it? It's kiwi fruit. Oh, I suppose he's never seen any before. Mmm, that's delicious. Come on, let's fill our sacks with them. You do these bushes. I'll do the ones over there. OK. It's so lovely and warm here. I think I could stay forever. I couldn't. Paradise is all very well, but you can't beat life at sea, even in a storm like the one last night. Shh. What's the matter, Jamie? You look like you've just seen a ghost. Looks like trouble. Bad trouble. Come and have a look, but don't make any noise. What is it? There's a village. Look through there. Oh, yeah. See what you mean? Those warriors, they look fearsome. They're just like the people on those stamps with tattoos and spears. They must be Maoris. I don't like the way they're pointing to the shore. You mean they're going to attack the ship and us? That's what I'm afraid of. We must hurry back and warn the captain. Can you remember the way back? Yes, follow me. Looks like we're the last to arrive back. The captain will be angry with us for keeping him waiting. Actually, he looks in a really good mood. Maybe it's this place and the climate. Sir, sir, there are tribesmen, a large number of them heading this way. Good. I shall offer the hand of friendship to them in the name of the king. I'm not sure that's such a good idea, Captain. Perhaps on second thoughts, we should make friends next time. Look lively, lads, and get the boat into the water. Aye, aye, Captain. 
from the Admiralty. Here you are. There's a gold watch and chain and a little painting. That's the miniature of my wife. Let's have a look at these orders. Uh, Captain, don't you think you should read your orders later when we're back on the Endeavour? My orders are to seek out Terra Australis, the fifth continent. This is more than I could have hoped for. I've dreamed of finding the fifth continent ever since I was a boy. You'll never discover it unless you get out of here fast. Uh, here, you have a point. Back to the ship, lad. Roll! Roll! Oliver, what was that piece of cloth you tucked into your shirt just now? It has a name embroidered on it. The Gallyhank's name. Vanek, no. Judah Fulham. You mean it was Judy who stole the captain's package after all? It seems so. And I was so sure he might do it. Maybe now the captain's got his things back, he won't hang him. Perhaps not, but I can no longer call him a friend. Watch out! The space dog in a boat! Oh! The boat's capsizing! Maoris have turned back. The Endeavour's guns must have frightened them off. Uh, we won't be seeing them again. Where are Sarah and Jamie? Uh, no sign of the young ones. Maybe the sharks have got them. Phew. I really thought we'd had it that time. Me too. I've never fancied drowning at sea. Looks like we're back where we started, at the stamp exhibition. Oi, excuse me. Would you mind not dripping all over my stamps? Oh no, we're soaking wet. Look, Sarah, it's those South Pacific stamps. We've just been in the Pacific, literally. That's why we're all wet. We're on Captain Cook's ship, the Endeavour. Oh yeah, yeah, pull the other one. I know you've just come in out the rain. Come on, Sarah. Nobody's going to believe us. Might as well go home. It means going out in the rain again. You do look a bit like a drowned rat. Thanks a lot! <laughs> the music in Sealed Orders is taken from Brahms' First Symphony. The first movement starts with heavy beats from the timpani, over which a broad tune played by the strings rises higher and higher. The main music of the symphony begins with a turbulent and energetic violin theme which leaps and skips about.
Oboe and clarinet play a quiet duet. The strings play a curious scratching melody, which sounds almost spooky. This music develops into a vigorous new theme. An exciting orchestral build-up leads into a repeat of the opening music. In the fourth movement, we hear a beautiful melody for horn, repeated by a high flute. The main music of the movement begins with an elegant melody for strings and horns. After more boisterous music, the violins introduce a new melody. The woodwind and horns play a bouncy decorative accompaniment to a powerful string tune. The elegant string melody returns in a rich new orchestration.
the beautiful horn melody is shared by the whole orchestra. The movement ends with a tremendous orchestral crescendo. These are just some of the highlights of Brahms' first symphony. You're bound to discover more every time you listen. <laughs>